Elden Ring. Like the rest of the Dark Souls series, it's known for its vast world, tight mechanics, and most of all, its difficulty. No matter what the Redditors tell you, these games are hard. And while overcoming that challenge is part of the fun, it's not always that fast. In the vast expanse that is the new game release, speedrunners have been on the lookout through every nook and cranny across every horizon and even into the code to find ways to cheese, skip, and confuse the world of Elden Ring. And let me tell you, boy have we found some stuff. Everything from boss cheeses to super speed and even wrong warps. Since the launch of Elden Ring nearly three weeks ago, there has been a seemingly never-ending amount of useful glitches, tricks, and strategies developed to help overcome this extremely difficult game with an air of consistency, and most importantly, speed. It's been so successful, in fact, that the game has already been beaten in under 30 minutes. In this video, I'm going to go over all the ways that speedrunners have cracked the code on Elden Ring, and just how we figured these things out. Because the game was delayed a month before its launch, you may think that this would leave the game in the better, and a more stable place. And while I'm sure this is true to some extent, this is definitely the most broken Souls game to date. I'm not just talking about glitches either, it performs very poorly. Most people on PC and lots of people on console are unable to hold a steady 60 frames per second. Hell, the game sometimes even would stutter so bad that stuff like this can happen. I finally found a resolution that works, guys. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, literally unplayable. Even so, it seems that there is some weird fucked up correlation between low frame rate and the quality of the game when it comes to FromSoft. The worse the frame rate is, the better the game. This causes an interesting dilemma for speedrunners though. Normally lots of tricks and glitches stem from a PC port exclusivity. This is because they can lift the frame rate restrictions of the game. Playing at frame rates higher than the intended experience puts you completely outside of the initial testing grounds of the developers, and often this leads to interesting and broken mechanical interactions. But since the game runs so poorly that even if you have a 3090 and a 5900X, there is no way you're going to get the game to run at frame rates higher than 60 FPS for any extended period of time, let alone high enough over 60 for any game-breaking strategies to be found. This actually eliminates the ability for speedrunners to use hardware to break the game entirely, leaving us with just what is actually in the game at its intended work rate. And after further inspection, let's just say that'll be plenty. Presumably due to the intense amount of content in the game, over 170 boss fights in a huge open world map, not everything can be as thoroughly tested as it can be in a more linear experience. Normally in game design, each experience is crafted meticulously and tested over and over again to make sure it's balanced for the intended experience and limit tested to the extremes. This is simply not true. Because of the scale of the game as large as Elden Ring, and because some stuff is just going to slip through the cracks. The first thing that did was fog wall cheeses. The way that boss scripting works in Souls games is that unless a boss spawns in via a cutscene when you enter the boss arena, the boss is usually just bing chilling, spending his time inside the boss room with nothing better to do. The boss's AI isn't programmed to do anything until the player reaches a certain point or does a certain thing. Sometimes this manifests in a fog wall, a wall of luminescent fog that the player must traverse through, triggering the start of the fight. Or, at least, usually. Sometimes you can very simply enter the boss arena through other means. In Kaelid, there is a double boss, shocker, that is guarding the Lusat staff. The fog wall can't be entered until you do a puzzle in the nearby city, where you light each tower's torch. However, if you're using the horse to parkour over the wall into the boss arena, you can completely avoid using the boss wall at all. This leads us into what we call an AI break. Despite being eerily similar to the name of a certain hentai tag, it's relatively harmless. At least, to the player. In this state, the bosses just never activate. This allows the player to wail on them while they're AFK. Similar to your teammates in CSGO that just leaves without saying anything. Seriously, we have timeouts now. For most one-phase bosses, this gives you free reign to just kill them, and the scripting for being the boss actually works. 
they die, get felled plus ratio. You get souls and their items, and you can go about your day knowing you totally conquered that super hard boss fight. In this instance with the Nox couple, you are actually stuck inside the arena because of the puzzle, but you can fast travel out very easily. Not every boss's fog wall can be avoided though. In fact, it's pretty rare that this is possible, but it's almost a certainty that more variations of skips like this will be found. Don't worry, there are many other ways to get past a fog wall that is triggering that pesky boss's AI. A classic one is called the Death Cam Skip. If you have ever seen a Dark Souls 1 speedrun, you're sure to have seen this before. Unshockingly, it works in Elden Ring too. It's actually the easiest it's ever been. Basically, by tricking the camera into thinking you're about to fall to your death, you can get it locked into the death camera perspective. This has the overview effect, making it really hard to see. But what it also does is it stops other areas from loading in. By jumping over a death pit with torrent and then using your double jump to jump back to safety, you can trigger a death cam very easily. With the camera like this, you can walk around and explore the world, but certain elements of the world won't load in. One of which is fog walls. The only place this is useful at the moment is for the same fight with the Nox duo. By setting up a death cam underground, you can walk to the surface and across Kaelid. From there, you can walk past the puzzle wall and foot out. When you load back in, the camera will be back to normal, but you will be past the fog wall and ready to fight the boss. At the moment, this really has no practical use for any speedrun category, as it takes a long time to set up, and there are other better, faster techniques for doing the same thing. One of which is this simple yet effective cheese. If you stand far away from the boss wall as possible, you can enter into it and in some instances, just barely come out the other side of the wall. This can allow for bosses' AI not to trigger. Hugging the wall in this noble fight is just too far away for the boss to activate. Staying here for a few seconds will cause his AI to give up on ever recovering, leaving it devastated for life. Lucky for him, his life isn't going to last much longer. It's actually in the current any% speedrun route to kill this failed state puff marshmallow man on crack as the first boss. He's located in a late game area and drops 50,000 souls. By using a bleed weapon on him while he's AFK, you can kill him rather quickly and gain an early advantage on both souls and upgrade materials from the surrounding area. More than enough for you to be able to buy an upgrade all the way to plus 7 on any Somp weapon. Just past this boss is Rikard, one of the demigods. He too has a cheese, but this time it's not a fog wall dependent one. When you enter into the fight, he doesn't aggro until you get close enough to him. You can use this opportunity to go to his left side and scale onto these corpses, jumping off the helping hand of your fallen brothers so you can actually get to the top edge of the arena where Riker can't reach you. Only problem is, he still isn't aggro. If you aggro the boss and then do the jump, you can safely cheese him from here. The jump becomes much scarier though. This cheese only works for the first phase and is actually really slow to set up. Turns out, it's actually faster to just get good. Don't tell Reddit that they were right. Once the second phase starts, it teleports you to the center of the arena. From here, you can actually stunlock the boss with a series of L2s. There's another variation of a similar type of skip if you kill Patches. You can get an item that stuns Margit and Morgoth. This item can be used before the boss wall to completely stun the boss until it dies for Margit, and until you get to phase 2 with Morgoth. If this stuff sounds uninteresting or unfun, then you aren't alone. The Souls series has some of the largest and most popular glitchless speedruns on the internet, and it's no surprise why. Playing the game as intended is certainly fun to watch, but just note that this is only your opinion. There is no correct way to speedrun or play any game. It's all about what people find fun. And particularly during the launch of a new game, it makes the most sense to start with the glitched categories for a few reasons. Mainly, you want to limit test the game. Figuring out all the possible tricks and glitches is important for crafting any sort of category that would exclude such strategies. How are you going to know what you are not allowed to do in a glitches run if you don't know what the glitches are? Logistical reasons for starting with any percent aside, it's the most prestigious and pure category in speedrunning. For those who don't know, any percent means just beating the game with any percentage of the game completed, with no restrictions. This is speedrunning in its purest form with no alterations. Because of this, 
The community and culture of speedrunning loves to focus on the most quintessential question in speedrunning. How fast can you beat the game? What do I really mean by no restrictions though? For some people, the line isn't as solid as you may think. It was discovered that like in other Souls games, there is what is called long warps in Elden Ring. To break it down into its simplest terms, a wrong warp is where the game warps you wrongly. Think about it this way. You are at the Gatefront Grace, and you open the map to fast travel, and you select Stormfront Shack. You teleport, and when you get there, you spawn under the map and fall to your death. This is a wrong warp. You are intended to warp to the shack, and that warp location is above ground. At the Grace, but for some reason, the game warps you under the map and to your death. As it turns out, you could do exactly this with one simple method. Close your game. If the game is loading a fast travel location and the program is forced to quit at the right time, this can happen. This is called a force quit, and it is very divisive in the speedrunning community. Tricks like this blur the line between a glitch and manipulating the game's code itself. Because you have to forcibly close the game with external software like Windows, it's not actually within the confines of the game itself. And for some, this should not be allowed, even in any percent. No matter which side of the argument you fall on, though, there is an argument to be had. The way that the Dark Souls community has handled this in the past is by making two any percent categories, any percent with force quit and any percent without force quit. Giving the option for both is a nice solution. It allows for a competitive playing field for those who do wish to do the exploit, while also allowing one for those who don't. But does this actually save time? And how does it work exactly? So basically, the initial route for Force Quit was head to the Belfries just past the Academy. Here, there are three teleporters that give you sneak previews of future locations. One of those locations is Farm Zula. This area is unlocked after beating the Fire Giant and burning the Erden Tree. From here, you can go through the teleporter. In order to understand the trick, you need to understand the concept of stable ground. It's explained excellently in a few videos by Tomato Anus, but to recap, in Souls games, the game tracks your last stable ground location. This is the location that you'll spawn at if you were to quit out. This location is stored wherever you move and it's updated. When fast traveling, it stores the previous stable ground until a new one is found. If you teleport somewhere via quitting out and loading back in, or by fast traveling, it sets you to that stable ground area. This is unless you make the game lose your last stable ground location. By fast traveling to the Stormfront Shack from Farum and Alt F4ing the game, you can cause the game to lose your stable ground location. This confuses the game and it defaults to putting you in the default location for the area that you're warping to. In this instance, the shack, the default location just so happens to be underneath the map. This is a wrong warp. This alone is useless, but if you spawn underneath the map and quit out before you die, you could actually perform a second wrong warp. The game is not able to update your stable ground because you're under the map, but it uses your last stable ground before that, which just so happens to be in Farum Azula. This allows you to skip literally to the last six bosses of the game right from the beginning. You can do this on every bonfire in the game, actually. They all send you to different locations when you wrong warp using them. Some are more useful than others. The reason the Storm Shack is used is because it puts you underneath the map. That is what allows for the secondary wrong warp. This one just so happens to not only put you under the map, but also in a place that's high enough for you to be able to quit out before you fall to your death, or hit some out of bounds area to make new stable ground. This obviously was a revolutionary skip for the speedrun, but because it was exclusive to force quit, not many people ever even messed with it. In fact, the only person who I knew was routing it was Easyscape. That is, until someone found a way to do a wrong warp without forcing the game to close. In early routing for any percent, we were messing with fighting Rikard first. This was a really hard boss fight to do quickly, and it required a lot of practice. Because of this, one runner was practicing the boss and decided they needed a bathroom break after dying. They quit out and left. And then when they came back, they loaded into... Well, in front of the Volcano Manor. As it turns out, the Rikard bonfire is broken, and when you respawn at it, you're actually floating in the air above it. This removes your previous stable ground. When you quit out and load back in, it sends you to the default location for Volcano Manor, but just so happens to be in front of the door. This discovery was huge. 
Not only was it possible to wrong warp without doing a force quit, but it was simple and replicable. Because your recent bonfire after doing the wrong warp was still Riker's bonfire, anywhere in the game that you died it would send you back there as long as you didn't grab another grace somewhere else. This means that you could wrong warp to the default location of any area in the game as long as you could get there and then die. The problem was, the Belfry was all the way across the map, and most importantly, down the deck to slift. You can't use the deck to slift backwards, and going up and then doing the wrong warp would be too slow, so we had to find a way to get back down the mountain without spending too much time and losing the wrong warp. Basically, we had to be able to walk there from Volcano Manor. I immediately went to check the Magma Worm Path to see if you could do it backwards, but there was one small problem. The elevator was stuck at the bottom. This is when I had a stroke of genius. Bar if you jump down the elevator the shaft on Torrent, you can on. die from the fall damage, but when Torrent kicks you off, your hitbox is still active, and this activates the elevator. I'm fucking 5,000 IQ. There's no way. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. What? <laughs> when you respawn, the elevator is at the top, and you can wrong warp to the location right next to the elevator. Riding the elevator down was the moment of truth. Can you go through this boss wall backwards? Well, no, you can't. So I jumped into this pit to try and wall warp past it, and boom. I spawned right at the beginning of the cave, skipping the entirety of the backtrack. From here, we just rode Torrent to the Belfry and then died in Farum, warping us to the end of the game. While this route was cool conceptually, it lacked an actual execution. It was faster for sure, but the first 30 minutes of the run was just riding a horse and loading screens, basically. This was until we found a much better bonfire to use to set up the wrong warps from. This bonfire near the capital spawns you in the same way the one at Riker does, allowing for faster wrong warps with less travel time. This small reroute saved nearly 3 minutes. Force quit was still a lot faster though, like 10 minutes faster until someone discovered the holy grail of wrong warps. This wrong warp didn't require a bonfire to do at all. It turns out, if you do a dark sign and then fast travel at the right time, you can corrupt the game's stable ground from the area that you're teleporting to. This means you can wrong warp from any area without a bonfire and without needing to force quit the game. By doing the same exact warp you would do in force quit, but with a dark sign instead of force quitting, you could skip right to farm without having to fight any bosses prior. This once again revolutionized the category and potentially completely removed the need for a force quit category at all, as it's the same exact speed as doing the wrong warp. Once in late game, there are a couple of pretty cool and unique skips for some of the late game bosses. You can completely skip Gideon the MMO mage by doing a bit of platforming. After this, you can skip the fight with Godfrey entirely by jumping out of this railing and quitting out. If you have your settings on low, when you load back in, the fog wall will load slower than the ground, allowing you to walk right past it. Godfrey is here, he just doesn't have a hitbox, and he won't stop you from going right to the final boss. The Elden Beast also has an AI break, but this one is a bit random. It seems if you summon some sort of summon and then run behind him, there's a chance that he'll not attack and just stand there while you stomp his dirty ass into the ground. This has led to fully finished runs being as fast as under 30 minutes, about 15 minutes of setup and 15 minutes of boss fights. It's a really awesome little category. I have been learning and doing this run live over on Twitch most days, come say what's up, and let's kill some bosses together. Speaking of killed, there's one last trick I want to show you all and discuss before I go. It's called a zip, and currently, no one knows how or why it works. Basically, if you hold walk while blocking and tap forward, sometimes, well, uh, yeah, that happens. But this can be used to save huge amounts of time in the overworld and to skip whole bosses. Frankly, we know so little about it almost four days after its discovery that I'm not sure we'll ever fully understand it. If it is figured out though, it'll certainly change the speedrun forever and possibly create a new divisive category. Even so, I would love to see it solved just to see how fast the game can really get. There are tons of people helping to work on this in the Speed Souls Discord, and if you would like to try and help with it or have any ideas on how it may work, you should jump in there or let me know in the comments below.
Overall, Elden Ring has been a phenomenal experience, both casually and as a speedrun. I can't wait to see all of the crazy, game-breaking stuff that gets found and optimized in the future. Now that Wrong Warp is finally something solidified, I expect people to be transitioning into the No Wrong Warp categories, and maybe even All Remembrances. And I hope to be along for the ride. Thanks so much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed. Big thanks to all my patrons and everyone in the Speed Souls community, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.